So the COP22 discussion was basically a synthesis of the last several years of work, and it elevates the role of women in delegations, in the secretariat and the institutional arrangements, and in the work of countries to address the climate problem more aggressively. This has been a discussion that's been on for quite some time. It's not a brand new issue. It's been raised for the better part of a decade now that people have been thinking through what are these impacts? How do you take steps to address them? A number of factors enter into this. First is the large world. What are the issues that women are facing? And can we as nations, coming together under the UN auspices, can we as nations develop better policies and programs to address these issues that women disproportionately face? The answer is yes. And so there's been a call for countries in the implementation of their climate emissions programs and their resilience and adaptation programs to take account of gender uh, distributions, of gender roles, and how they might think about their policies in that context. And we've got a decision that enables that. The second is very much one that has to do with the working of governments. Governments often are not represented evenly not even close in gender balances. When I began first working on the climate change issue, I'd go to a meeting on energy policy and climate policy, and there might be one woman at the table and 25 men. It's a remarkable imbalance. There's been an effort to try to bolster that, to have more women engaged in the delegations working on these issues and in government working on these issues. And finally, there's the question of the system itself. Within the organizational structure of the climate convention and the secretariat, can you put women in positions of leadership? Can you put them into, uh, into supporting roles, into active positions where they can be players in the process? They bring a slightly different voice to the table, and that voice is quite powerful. The idea here is to do reporting, to evaluate whether you've got adequate performance, and then to encourage countries to create a better balance. Some things are doing pretty well. We've got the most recent report that was issued at the COP that talked about women in the secretariat. There are a number of committees that actually are almost exactly even, you know, 52% women even, or 48% men, but many are still falling quite short. One woman and 15 men. So you're still seeing an unevenness in the distribution. Now, it doesn't mean we need to have parity. That's not the point. The point is to have representation and make sure that voice is heard. And we're making progress, but we're not, that, not yet there. And the decision that we took at the COP essentially addresses all three of these. In the first one, it's through having a series of fora where you can discuss with people how their policies are working domestically. What are the actions they're doing? We're also looking at reporting back out. How are countries and delegations doing their work? And finally, we're looking to elevate and create a forum to make sure we're monitoring our progress. The decision of the COP did all of these things.